So in this video, we're going to talk about all things relating to AI content. We're going to talk about chat GPT and whether that's going to kill Google. We're also going to talk about whether Google can detect AI content. How do we take advantage of these AI content tools? And if you guys stick till the end, I'm going to show you guys really quickly how we can generate a blog post with one of these AI tools. So we can't really talk about AI content these days without talking about chat GPT. If you guys haven't seen it on TikTok or Instagram, I'm going to show you guys this incredible tool right now. It's the new dialogue version of the open AI product that's so popular. And there is a very big question around the chat GPT and SEO world. And that is, is chat GPT going to kill Google? And does that mean that I am out of a job? And the reality is that chat GPT is actually providing some incredible results for some search queries, which honestly makes me question how Google is even going to compete. Let's take a look at an example here. Let's say I type into chat GPT how to do keyword research. And we're going to let the AI write its answer. And while it's writing, I want to quickly compare what the results look like on Google. So if we just quickly take a look here, we're going to see that if we plug this into Google, the first thing that we see, we get bombarded by a big old section of ads, right? We're getting two SEO tools. So SEMrush and Moz, and then some article that's talking about keyword research methods, which isn't extremely helpful, right? We then get a featured snippet and obviously all the results that we would expect inside of a Google search result. But it doesn't really end there because if we click into one of the results, again, we need to remember that the query that I typed in is how to do keyword research, right? So we're going to see that a lot of these results, as we can expect, are going to have way more content than we actually need when we're looking for this answer. So we have the definition, which isn't something that we asked. We have why is it important, which also, again, it's another thing that we didn't ask. And if we scroll all the way down, then we're talking about the elements of keyword research. And then we finally get to how to do keyword research. We get a couple of steps, so on and so forth. So a lot harder to get to that answer. So if we compare this to chat GPT, we get a short, concise, no fluff answer that's straight to the point. And in a lot of ways, this is actually answering that question a lot better than Google, right? I'm not having to deal with ads. I'm not having to filter through fluff and a bunch of other websites that don't really know what they're talking about. Now, the cool thing about chat GPT is that because it is a dialogue, because it is a chat, what we can do is we can continue and dive deeper into this topic. Let's say I ask what's the best way of doing it for free. And of course, the AI is smart enough to know that the first question I asked had to do with cure research. So it's going to take that initial question and then continue it on to this next one. And now it's going to provide some free tools and resources again in a short, concise and objective answer, which is exactly what we're looking for. So the result that we're getting is quite solid. We do get Uber suggest here, which I'm not exactly sure how free their tool is. I know they have maybe a couple of credits that you can use for free and then you have to pay for one of their plans. But still, this is still an accurate result based on the query that we added. And so where does chat GPT really, really shine? So as we saw with a lot of these informational queries, chat GPT is going to do very, very well. Let me give you guys another example here. Let's say I type in what is SEO. It's going to give me a short, concise, again, no fluff answer directly answering that question straight to the point. Again, guys, this result is really solid and it's not really making me want to go into Google and check other options, right? And again, that use of the dialogue, the chat inside of this AI tool. So what we can do is we can ask another question under this. So could you simplify this, simplify it for a five year old? And of course, it's going to understand that again, we're talking about that previous topic, that previous question of what is SEO, and it's going to simplify that. Now, could I have found this on Google, most likely after a little bit of digging and changing my search query. However, what we're going to see is that this is where chat GPT really shines. But let's talk about some of its limitations, right? Obviously, this is scary to think that it could really compete with Google at this stage. But obviously, there's a lot of things that chat GPT is still missing. The first thing to say is that I've seen quite a few queries where chat GPT has gotten things factually incorrect, right? So that's definitely something important to note. The second thing is that chat GPT also has a hard time with subjective answers, right? So that also has to do with the type of search intent. So commercial and transactional search intents, chat GPT actually has a much harder time time with. So let's say I type in best smartphone for a student. I'm going to wait for that result here. And so now that we have the result, we can basically summarize this result with this last sentence right here. So ultimately, the best smartphone for a student will depend on their specific needs and budget. It's a good idea to compare features and prices, all of that. So a very generic answer, even though we do get a few results, what we are looking for when we type in a question like this is actually an article that looks a little bit more like this. This is actually one of the top search results. So we do want to see all the 
reasons to buy, the reasons to avoid, the score. We want to have that subjective opinion based on someone's preferences that has used this phone and knows more or less what they're talking about based on the battery and the things that they've tested, right? So that's definitely one of the reasons that we'd use Google. We want to compare people's opinions, people's experience. This is something that ChatGPT is currently lacking, but I'm sure this is something that they could work on. And again, connected to this, one of the main limitations is the fact that the chat is stuck in 2021 and it is not connected to the internet. So if we type in something like who will win the FIFA World Cup in 2022. And so as we can see with this answer, we can find that limitation quite clearly, right? It's basically telling me it cannot predict the outcome of future events, even though the final for this event took place last night and we already have a winner. So ChatGPT is stuck in December 2021. So this is where its main limitation is. If you ask for current events, ChatGPT will not be able to help you out. And while this is definitely something that I think they can improve and work on, on top of obviously connecting ChatGPT to the internet, right now we don't have to worry too much about Google. Now, I do highly recommend that you guys play around with this tool. It is completely free. I'll leave a link to that in the description. But there's actually more to AI content than just ChatGPT. That's just the new trendy product. And I'm sure you guys know there's a bunch of AI companies that have been built on top of this open AI product. Companies like Jasper, Copy AI, Writer, so on and so forth. And these guys are making it super easy to publish content quickly and affordably. Before we get into how we can generate content with these tools, I do want to quickly talk about that very important question. Can Google detect AI content and will it detect content if I'm using some of these tools? Now, the important thing is to firstly take a look at this article. It's an article published in April of this year. And we basically have John Mueller, who is Google search advocate, saying that AI content falls under auto generated content, which can lead to a manual penalty. And this is actually something that I've been seeing all over Twitter. There's a lot of these heavy AI content sites that have been getting manual penalties or have been getting their traffic completely shut down by Google. And then there's other websites that are still surviving and are honestly thriving out there with the amount of content that they're able to publish with these tools. And so in terms of whether Google can detect AI content, I think for the previous versions of the open AI product, GPT and GPT-2, Google had a much easier time detecting this type of content. As the tech has improved with GPT-3, and I think ChatGPT is currently on GPT-3.5, and I know GPT-4.0 is coming quite soon as well, Google is having a much harder time detecting that content because it is starting to sound a lot more human-like as you guys saw before. So if you are someone who's posting 10 blog posts a day directly from content that's being spit out by one of these AI content tools, then there is a very high likelihood that Google can catch up to you, right? And that is quite scary. So even though I think these tools are incredible, I would personally use them as writing assistants. The main thing here is you can definitely use these tools to speed up how much content you're producing, but make sure that for every piece of content that you're running through these tools, you're giving it a really solid read and a very solid human edit to make sure that the quality of the content at the end of the day is solid, right? That's what Google is interested in, making sure that the experience on Google is phenomenal. And so if you're providing high quality content using one of these tools to help you make that content, then in my personal opinion, I don't think there's going to be anything wrong with that. And it's going to be very hard for Google to detect that content. Now, I do want to quickly show you guys how I would generate a blog post with Jasper. It's honestly a lot faster than you guys might think. So let's go over to Jasper here. I'm going to start from scratch here with a blank document. Now, let's say that I don't even have a title for my blog post. We're going to let Jasper help us out with that. And the important thing with these AI tools and with Jasper is to get very comfortable with the idea of commands, right? We basically just want to tell the AI, we want to tell Jasper to help us out with specific commands. So let's start off with this command. So generate a few blog titles for my vegan desserts website. So I'm going to highlight, I'm going to hit shift command and enter. That's basically telling Jasper to take that command that I've written and follow through with it, right? So let's check out some of these results. So five must try vegan desserts, how to make your own vegan condensed milk, the best chocolate cake. I'm going to try this first one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of this, delete this guy and turn this into an H1 so that Jasper knows that that's the main topic of this article. I'm just going to add this here, the tone of voice, let's say it's witty and the keywords vegan must try vegan desserts. Cool. Now, what we're then going to do is we're going to work on an outline. So we can again use a command to get Jasper to help us out with that. So generate an outline for this blog post. 
Again, I'm gonna highlight it, Shift, Command, and Enter, and it should give us a really solid outline for that. Now we have five vegan desserts that we can talk about for this article. So we have tiramisu, chocolate cake, mango lassi. Okay, that's cool. Let's move forward with that. Now, what I'm gonna do is down here, I'm gonna hit another command. I'm gonna say generate an introduction for this blog post. Again, I'm gonna highlight, Shift, Command, and Enter, and we're gonna let Jasper create that introduction for us. So there are many types of vegan desserts. Each one is delicious is the last here five must tries okay perfect so we like that it's short but it works for right now i'm just going to add that intro right here and what we're going to do now is we're basically going to help jasper identify the different sections of content in this blog post so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this first section set it up as an h2 hit enter and all i'm going to do is hit compose jasper now knows the topic that it's talking about it's taking it from that h2 heading it recognizes that it's a new section and it's now going to write about it so basically Based off the result that I see here, this honestly isn't going to give us enough content. So I am going to change this heading just temporarily so I can give Jasper a better command. So generate a recipe for a vegan tiramisu from Italy. I'm going to delete this and now I'm going to hit compose again. Again, we're going to see that oftentimes Jasper gets basically cut off based on the output length that I've selected. I do like to select a medium just so I'm more in control of the output. All we have to do here is just hit compose again and Jasper will continue to write. Again, we're going to hit compose again and that's basically it. Jasper is telling me that it's done with this specific section. So now we have a recipe for a vegan tiramisu from Italy. So now that I have that section completed, what I can do is I can just quickly edit this heading and have that heading ready to go. So a delicious vegan tiramisu from Italy. Phenomenal. So that looks great. I'm now going to do that same thing with this second heading. So again, generate a recipe for there we go. I'm going to again hit this as an H2 just so it knows. And I'm going to shift command and enter. And again, it's going to generate all the different ingredients and the how to for that recipe. So I'm going to hit compose again. And again, as you guys can see, it's spitting out the complete recipe to make this specific dessert. So I'm going to keep going here, keep going. And that's basically it. So now we have the second section. I'm not going to do this for the other desserts in the blog post just because we'll be here all day. But let's say I finish it off right there. What I can then do is I can tell Jasper to generate a conclusion for this blog post. Again, shift command and enter. And Jasper knows that we're talking about this specific blog post. So we now have the recipes we've included are sure to tantalize your taste buds and leave you wanting more. Whether you're looking for a classic dessert to Ramsu or a vegan, we've got you covered. Be sure to try them all. So we've basically gone from not even having a blog idea to having a title, an outline, and a semi-complete blog that I would highly recommend reading through properly and heavily editing if we see anything that doesn't make sense. If you guys want to try a Jasper, check out the link in the description. There's going to be a link for that. And if you guys like this video, I highly recommend you guys check out this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.